online. Good morning to those of you watching online. Uh, as always, it's a joy to be with y'all here in the house of God. And we want to worship King Jesus. And we don't want to waste any time. So if you're able, can you stand with me? We're going to stand so that we can give King Jesus our best. This morning when I was driving in, I was just really stuck on these stories you hear in the Gospels where people are desperate just to reach out and touch Jesus. They're clamoring over each other just to touch his garments. Jesus is a God who responds to hunger. He responds to desperation. And so this morning, as we start singing our songs to him, as we start giving him an offering of praise, a sacrifice of praise, let's be a hungry people. Let's be a desperate people. King Jesus, make us hungry for you. Make us desperate for you, God. May we know that it is you and you alone who can quench our thirst. You and you alone who can meet every need, every desire of our heart. So come Holy Spirit. We welcome you in this place, Jesus. We love you, Lord. And we give you this offering of our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen.
all the glory for all you are, all you've done. All the glory for all you are, all you've done. All the glory. I think it's good just to remind ourselves that this time that we have isn't about energy or excitement but it's the rightful response to God so let's just begin to respond to Jesus We're just going to wait a moment, but bring to mind those things that you're grateful for, that you're thankful for. We give you thanks, Jesus. We give you honor, Jesus. Cheers. 
down before King Jesus. 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 I wonder what that looks like for us. If we were to truly lay our whole life down for King Jesus. that look like if you laid your whole life down for King Jesus? If you really gave him every moment of your life, every penny in your bank account, every aspect of your giftings and hearts and whatever it might be, if you gave him your whole life, what would that look like? I think we should ask King Jesus what that looks like. Jesus. So all around the room and online, just take this moment right now and ask him, what would giving you my whole life look like? to some of you right now about specific things that he's asking for from you. And for some of you, it came up and your immediate response was no. 
And there's, there's grace in this. There's so much grace. There's so much kindness of Jesus in this. But he is worth everything in your life. So whatever he is asking for, it is a joy and an honor and a glory to give it to him. And so we just acknowledge that where those things have come up and we don't want to give them to him, we recognize that as an idol. And right now, Jesus, we say no more idols in our hearts. We say no more idols in our lives. Jesus, we give you the throne of our hearts again. We put you back where you belong as king over our hearts and king over our lives. The only one worthy of everything. We speak to the idols in this room and online and we say, be broken in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We break the spirit of idolatry of, in our church and in our individual lives in Jesus' name and blood. We say there is only one King and one God for us and his name is Jesus. Jesus, you are the King of our lives. Jesus, Jesus, come Holy Spirit, come and minister, Holy Spirit, Jesus, Jesus. Before we rush out of this moment, I want us to just sit in it. Because for some of us, this is a deep moment with the Lord. Jesus, come Jesus. Actually, for some of us, this is actually a moment of salvation. There are some of us here today or watching online who you, maybe you've been going to church for years and you've been trying to clean your life up. But this is actually a moment of salvation where you turn and you face Jesus. And you say, you are my going to. But I actually think for some of us, you need ministry right now. Like what God is doing in you right now, you need someone to come alongside you and agree with it and bless it and maybe, I mean, maybe help you tear down those strongholds. And so if you're online, you can do that. You can uh, prayer at coastlinevineyard.church. We'll, we'll get someone to reach out to you this week. But if that's you in the room, If you're in the room and, and actually in this moment you need someone to come and pray for you, I'm just gonna ask you to be super brave. And if you can just reach your hand up and we can, we have some incredible uh, ministry team, uh, enabling team. If you can see these guys who have their hands up and there's some on this side. And if you can just g gather around them. Jesus. And let's just allow Holy Spirit to minister in this space. There's someone on this side as well. Jesus, come Holy Spirit. Jesus, Jesus. And while these, uh, th these groups are getting prayed for, there, there's still a moment for the rest of us to sit in his kingship, <clears throat> to sit in, his ownership of our lives. Jesus, come Holy Spirit. Jesus. 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 Jesus.
Jesus, we recognize your ownership of our life, that we are yours. That your ways are better than ours. So we submit to you, King Jesus. We yield our, our own self-authority to you. Come and be our King, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the work you're doing here, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless you, King Jesus. Jesus, come, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Jesus. Jesus. I want to honor what Holy Spirit's doing, and there's some people who are getting some pretty deep prayer and ministry. There's also some of you who are, are uh, sat, but I can see the Lord is doing something deep in your hearts. And I want to honor that space as well. So what we're going to do, though, is um, we are going to transition into a time of giving. And this is a way that we can practically give back to Jesus. We can practically show him uh, the ways that we want to honor him with our lives. Maybe that's through our finances or our time, resources. And so we have baskets that are going to come around. And you can use this moment to, to sign something up for a team, to, to give financially if this is your moment to normally do that. But um, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this. Can I just ask you guys to keep playing in the background? Normally we'd have uh, time to chat, but, but there is something really holy happening for, for a lot of us in this room. And so I just want to keep that going a little more. So we're, you're going to have about two to three minutes. You can uh, give the way you feel like he's asking you to give. You can keep receiving prayer if you're receiving prayer around the room. Or you can just keep sitting thanking him for who he is and what he's done. But I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that, and then we'll come back, okay? So Jesus, we honor who you are in your gift of generosity. And I, we go into the rest of this gathering and hearing your word through this posture, this posture of worship and glory to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Um, just to say, if you were wanting to give financially and you didn't have the opportunity to do that, you can use the QR codes or those gift envelopes on your seat. Um, but right now, I'm going to invite Phil up. You can give him a round of applause. He's great. He deserves a round of applause. And he's going to tell us about some of the uh, compassion stuff going on. 
Indeed. Great. So, hello, Coastline. How are we doing? You all right? Good to see you. So, we believe in hope here, don't we? Yes, we do, Phil. That's a really good thing. We do. And we believe in a lovely charity called Hope Into Action. It's a national charity with a mission to uh, enable churches to tackle the problem of homelessness. And it works with 85 churches across the UK, uh, providing help, support, um, helping folks to stay off the streets, providing help and pastoral care, and helping to build a better future. There are now 200 people who live in a HIA house, and uh, they're getting the love and support of their local churches. And in BCP, Hope Into Action partner with FaithWorks, And I'm pleased to say there are four HIA HIA houses in BCP, and Coastline has one of them. And it's a vital part of our uh, community trust, the ministry is under the community trust, and Dave Fennell's on the team, and he's here today. He's going to tell us what goes on. Thanks. One of the sentences in that last song was, he brings things to life. Uh, And we've seen God doing that this morning, and we've seen that in the Hope in Action house too. And I've been privileged to be part of the support team for that house since it was formed uh, just before COVID. And it's really just getting alongside people, befriending, listening, supporting, uh, going to the house, chatting, going out for coffee, going for a meal, going for walks, whatever. Um, And it's been thrilling to see that God is in the restoration business that he's putting people back together, that he's bringing about a shalom, a wholeness, and a peace in people's lives. And as we said earlier, we recognize that we're in the now and the not yet, and that that is a continuing work that God is doing in people's lives. And I've got permission from two of the guys that have been in that house just to talk a little bit about them. One of them, uh, in his youth, youth, was a dancer, Um, with one of the shows before Strictly. I think it was just called Come Dancing and up at Blackpool at the time. Um, And he had everything going for him, but his marriage fell apart, his relationships fell apart, his health. He started to drink a lot and became an alcoholic. He was self-harming. He was full of anxiety, and he ended up homeless, and he ended up in Bournemouth. And he came into the Hope in Action house and just slowly began to talk to us, began to tell us something of his history and of his life and to trust. He started to come to Coastline. He started to relate to people here. He came to faith. It was thrilling to see him go to the discipleship course and to see him being baptized, to see him growing in confidence and in mending relationships. Like us, all, he's got a long way to go, but he's on that road. Another one of the guys um, is only in his 30s, but he's had two decades of addiction, caused so much chaos and trouble at home that he had to be thrown out by his parents. Relationships for him failed. He ran away with the circus and ended up going around Europe for nine months with the circus, came back homeless. Uh, but came into the Hope in Action house and told Joe on his form that he was an atheist. Then things started to happen in his life. He became quite ill, and he started to pray. And he discovered that God's a God that answers prayers for him, and that his health was completely turned around. He's now got himself a full-time job. He's moved out of that house and moved into his flat, And the look on his face when he said to me, come in and see my home, was absolutely thrilling. He's watching these services online, hasn't made a commitment as yet, but a week ago he said, could I have a Bible, Dave? I'd love to read the Bible. So two of the guys, please pray for them that they will grow in their faith and in their love for Jesus and pray that they would have that supernatural Holy Spirit power to resist the temptations, to move forward, and to grow more and more in their love for Jesus. Thank you for your prayers and support. Brilliant. Thanks, Dave. 
So why are we telling you all this today? Well, frankly, it's such a great ministry. I think we don't talk about it very much, and it's an important part of what we do. So I recognize a number of folks are new here. So we want to just tell you all about it. So that's uh, part of what we're doing today. The second thing is obviously to pray. As Dave says, you know, this is really uh, missional kingdom stuff. So please pray into it. Lift it up in your prayers. Lift the team up in your prayers. Uh, but the third thing is we'd like you to be involved. You know, our ambition has always been to have more than one house. So if you'd like to be part of that picture of uh, making a greater impact on homelessness in our town, then we'd like you to be involved as well. So please come up and talk to us about it, and we'll show you how to do that. If you're online, I think the QR code will come up on the screen. Um, and for you guys in the room here, there's a QR code that should be in the pocket in the seat in front of you. Click on there and join the team is the link, and you'll see there how to, uh, to join up with the HIA team, or at least show your interest in joining the team. And we'd love to come and talk to you a bit more about this amazing ministry. God bless you. Thanks, Phil. Uh, as he said, HIA is just one of the amazing compassion ministries that sits under Coastline Community Trust. And another great one is Joy Cafe. I'm sure many of you will have been. Uh, but Joy Cafe is a community cafe in the heart of Boscombe. And in addition to serving delicious coffee and cakes, it also is doing incredible work with the community, loving them, taking care of them. Uh, we've seen salvations, healings, deliverance, all kinds of really beautiful, amazing Jesus things. And they're currently fundraising for a job role to have someone specifically focused on community support. Uh, and they're about 80% funded for that role. But we would love to get this job out there, get them working in the community. And so we need to get to 100%. And so maybe you could give to it and be part of that donation. But also, that means you're part of what God is doing in Churchill Gardens in Boscombe. So you can uh, check that out. It's in the link tree. It's on the QR code. Then the Coastline Weekly, all the places, but read about it. Please give to it so that we can continue to bless Boscombe. But now we're going to invite Ant up. You can give him a round of applause. He's great as well. And we're going to pray for him uh, as we hear the word. Jesus, we thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you that it is the power to change and transform and that it always points us to you. And so we pray for that as we hear it and receive it in our hearts. And we pray a blessing over Ant as he shares, that he will feel your full freedom in sharing, your full revelation and wisdom as he speaks your words. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. Well, I've been on the team here at Coastline for nearly five years. I began in my role as the youth pastor and four days uh, after Joe and I were married is the first day in my role here at Coastline. And Joe thought it would be a good idea to go to the Caribbean on our honeymoon. Well, God had other ideas. Shepton Mallet with 40 youth for Soul Survivor 2019. I think the phrase that Joe used at the time when I told her was fuming. But I said... Don't worry, babe, we'll be sipping pina coladas before you know it. Well, our honeymoon was booked for a few days after we were due to get home. After camping in a field for a week with uh, this youth group that I'd never met and this team that I'd never led. And uh, I'd been in ministry somewhere else for three years before this. Uh, two years of that I was the only pastor. Um, and so mine and Joe's reward was waiting for us in a faraway resort. So we woke up on that first glorious morning. Some of the team might even be in this room and they'll remember this. So we wake up, the sun is shining, the birds are singing. What's this? An email from British Airways. Due to strikes, we've cancelled your trip and we'll refund you in five days. If you've ever watched a period drama and they go into mourning, this was Jo. But instead of a black armband on her arm, she turned up to the 7.30 a.m. morning meeting with the team where she introduced us to the team wearing sunglasses to hide the rage in her eyes and the tears uh, streaming down her face. But she was betrayed by her mouth when she apologized for having to spend a week with all of you lot in this field. And the reward of our dream honeymoon had evaporated. 
Well, you'll be pleased to know that a few weeks later, after several phone calls to backdoor phone lines uh, that Joe found on Twitter, and I think some influence through John, our lead pastor, with a contact that he has at BA, we were able to rebook our honeymoon and claim that reward a few weeks later. And pina colada never tasted so good. <laughs> well, our title today is Jesus Rewards. We're in the book of Matthew towards Matthew's account. And I just want to acknowledge the room before we get into this passage that I know for many of us here, uh, this is personal. Um, there are things that you love about it. And maybe you're hoping that I say something that you particularly love about this passage. So I just want to apologize up front if I don't, because it's a deep well. And I can't say everything today, but hopefully I say something that speaks to you. Well, we're coming together today, as I said, towards the end of the Jesus story in the Gospel of Matthew. He's been traveling around Galilee and the surrounding area for three years, performing miracles, the disciples following him, understanding who he is as the Messiah. God, come to be with us. And so if you have a Bible with you, then feel free to turn to Matthew 26, verses 6 to 13. We're at the end of Jesus's ministry, and Matthew gives us a glimpse of Jesus's final activities among some of his followers. And as we head towards Easter, the Passover festival and the festival with the unleavened bread are only two days away before the Last Supper, and Jesus's enemies are plotting his death. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. This woman is Mary. She's the sister of Lazarus and Martha. And this alabaster jar itself, as well as the perfume, was expensive. This was a soft stone that looked like marble imported from Egypt. So imagine the scene, the fragrance of this perfume when the jar is broken begins to fill the room. And the disciples express dismay at the apparent waste of such expensive perfume. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, Why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news of the gospel is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Did you notice that this moment, this act, happens while he was eating? And I wonder, how are you with interruption? Maybe you're working on something really important, or you're streaming uh, a show that is uh, suspenseful, uh, maybe it's a movie you've been wanting to see for a while, and the Wi-Fi cuts out. Maybe uh, you're trying to leave the house, and uh, you get a, an unexpected phone call, and then you're late for where you need to be. Or you're trying to get through an errand, or, or just get something really important done, and the kids are at your feet asking, when can we go to the park? Well, something in Mary just couldn't wait. She said, this is the moment. I know the meal's not over, but this is the opportunity to break this alabaster jar and pour out what's inside. Then the disciples, what a waste. I wonder, what do you say that to? When do you tend to judge others in a situation? Where maybe you say, well, if I was there, if I was in this situation, I would have done this. But Jesus saw it completely differently than everybody else in the room. What some saw as a waste, Jesus sees as a good thing. In other translations, we read that Jesus says her act is beautiful. Jesus sees the deep devotion behind it. He said, she has done a good thing to me. The disciples, they criticized Mary for wasting this valuable ointment, but there was something deeper happening here. 
Well, this is another example of Jesus seeing the true heart of a person where often we see what's on the surface. Throughout our Encountering Jesus series, we've seen Jesus restore, respond, refine, and today, reward. We've been looking at four accounts of people who encounter Jesus and the impact on them. When Lance taught us about Zacchaeus' encounter with Jesus, we saw an enemy of the state who extorted the people, transformed into a generous giver, moved to compassion to give back to those in need. Sarah preached about Jesus' encounter with Lazarus, speaking to what deeply moves and troubles us, that when we proclaim Jesus and when we partner with him, he brings his compassion and justice and his kingdom and resurrection life into every dead situation. And last week, Phil preached on the rich young man who asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he says, go and sell everything you have that comes in the way between you and God and be like a little child. This week, this encounter with Jesus teaches us that our lives speak an eternal significance. Our lives speak an eternal significance. How we treat others is a witness to what we have seen and known of God if we know him. See, our attitudes and our actions and our interactions and our reactions, they really matter. They tell a story of who God is, of this storyteller that you and I are made in the image of, the one that Tolkien says is the archetypal myth become fact in the person of Jesus. God come to be with us, entering into our reality. This passage reminds us that what we do and what we say reveal the heart. And out of our heart comes love. And love is the one thing we're capable of perceiving that transcends the boundaries of time and space. If you, like me, like the Christopher Nolan film Interstellar. Many of us, we've experienced grief. And grief is so painful because it's so easy to believe the lie that death is the end. But we are an eternal creation. We know this. Solomon writes that God has set eternity in the human heart. And C.S. Lewis reminds us that you do not have a soul. You do not have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. This life isn't all there is. What we do in this life echoes into and beyond the dimensions of what we see and perceive in this reality, into eternity. I wonder who's here today because a follower of Jesus did something or said something that led to you following him. That's true of my life. My mum died when I was 14. I'd just turned 14. She was a a gentle, a humble lady. She was a nurse at Bournemouth Hospital. Uh, she was actually adopted from birth, so I know very little about her. It's very difficult to trace her ancestry. She wasn't known widely in history. But those of us who have loved someone and lost them, we know that they live through us. And the impact of my mum's life is that she had a steadfast faith that even though she died young and she told people in private that God works in mysterious ways, this ultimately, I believe, was formative in leading me to coming to know God, to choosing to follow him when I was 18. Her attitudes, her actions, our interactions, our reactions, they go beyond us and they echo into eternity. When we live for God, Jesus sees and he acknowledges every act of love and devotion towards him, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem to others. He sees it as a good thing. How we choose to live makes a difference. The world around us will tell us that following Jesus is not worth it, that it's too much, and that's because there is a cost to our discipleship. There's a cost to our discipleship. Following Jesus is a sacrifice. He says that it means to pick up our cross and follow him, to leave what we know and to lose our life for his sake. And when we do, the profound mystery is that somehow we find it, the true life that he invites us into. Mary's deed in this moment was beautiful 
because it was costly to her. This was a year's worth of salary, not including the alabaster jar imported from Egypt. This was a sealed container, and once the top of it was broken, you couldn't reuse it, and so all of the contents had to be used. She used all of it on Jesus. In other accounts, we read that she anoints his feet with it, as well as having poured it over his head in Matthew's account. The fact that her act was sacrificial is what made it beautiful in the eyes of Jesus. She was concerned with just one thing. She wanted to bring something of value to Jesus, this alabaster jar of worship. And Jesus' response challenges us to examine our own hearts and consider how we express our love for him. Are we willing to pour out our most precious possessions, our time, our talent, and our treasure to see him anointed and his kingdom come? For those of us who have already made that decision to follow Jesus, it's a daily decision. It's not one that we make one time that we decide to follow him. But what does this look like every day? Well, for woman for Mary, it was the overflow of her heart and her understanding of who, who this Jesus is in front of her. She had a, a deeper insight into the significance of this act. You know, there's a ritual throughout the Bible involving fragrant plants and spices that make a rich oil to pour on special objects or people called anointing oil. In the Garden of Eden, the very beginning of creation, we read in Genesis that God provides water for the dry land. This is the first anointing. The oil is a liquid symbol. It's the water of life and God's spirit combined together, used to mark a person or a place as a bridge between heaven and earth. Later we read that Jacob has a vision, a dream of a stairway to heaven. And he anoints the stone on which he slept and he calls the place house of God, a place where heaven and earth are one. And then the Israelites, they build a tabernacle in the wilderness. And when it was completed, they anointed the temple with oil, the tent, sorry, marking it as a place where God's heavenly presence had come down to earth. And then as we read on through history, we see Israel's priests and kings, they were anointed with oil to set them apart as leaders to mediate God's wisdom from heaven to earth. We know if we've read through the Old Testament, that ultimately they reject God's wisdom, paving the way for one anointed with water and spirit. And in this moment, fragrant oil, not merely a bridge to heaven, but heaven itself come to earth. Mary didn't just know the things of Jesus. She didn't, she didn't just know this lineage and this story, but she knew him. She understood who this Jesus is, and she couldn't help but bring what she had as an act of love to him, understanding the unfolding story. And in response, Jesus, he refuses to have her shamed for her generosity, for maybe looking foolish in front of the others there. He recognizes the depth of Mary's love. He understands the significance of her gesture, and he honors her, explaining how much her gift means to him far more than any of the others there realized that in just two days, the body that she anointed would be buried. E. Stanley Jones, who was a, an American author, a missionary to India, and confidant to President uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt during the Second World War, wrote the line, Jesus is the speech of eternity, translated into the language of time. And that language is a life. He is the eternal God, made known to us in human form. Heaven come to earth. And next week, we'll celebrate that he is alive, that he comes to live in us by his spirit. And for us, just like Jesus said would be the case for the disciples, we don't have him with us in person. 
And so this constant decision, waking up each day, giving your time and your life and your devotion and all that you hold dear and precious to you that costs you a lot, your worship to Jesus is a challenge because there are two things that hold each one of us back. Fear of others and love of comfort. Two things that hold each one of us back from stepping into all that God has called and created us and is asking us to do every day, fear of others and love of comfort. And what happens in our lives is the approval of people and our desire for convenience replaces the purposes of God. And so I want to ask you today, and those of you watching and joining with us online, maybe whenever you're watching this back, what will you be remembered for? What will you be remembered for? Jesus promises that Mary's act of devotion will be remembered and celebrated wherever the good news of the gospel is preached. Our lives, our acts of love and service towards God, they're not forgotten. They leave an eternal imprint because your life speaks an eternal significance. How will you be remembered? I know there are people here whose hearts break for the poor. As we heard earlier about our Hope Into Action House and all that Dave shared about those two guys in it. God bless you for your compassion, those whose hearts break for the poor. Well, maybe you say, well, I don't know what God's created me to do. I don't know what my calling is. I don't know what he's asking me to do. You don't even know what he's put in you that he wants to pour out of you. Well, I would ask you, what breaks your heart? What would you do even if you weren't paid to do it? What comes easy to you and how can you do it for God? If you want to know the purpose of your life, Start from a place of worship, of bringing to Jesus what you have, bringing your alabaster jar, what truly costs you to follow him so that each day you might join in with what N.T. Wright calls the ongoing story of healing and renewal. I want to tell you that from my life, the closer that I get to God and the longer that I stay there with him, the greater clarity I have of what he's created me to do. And the longer you follow this rabbi, the more of the dust from the road you walk with him ends up on you. Mary's interruption teaches us that if you want to live a life worth remembering, don't miss the opportunities God gives you to pour out what he's put in you. What's in your alabaster jar? What can you bring to him? What will you be willing to do for him, no matter how it looks to others? So those of us who have decided to follow Jesus, this is a a reminder and a wake up that we can't have the someday mentality. And we can't have the Sunday mentality that someday my faith will look more than coming to church on Sunday. Do I really believe what I say? Does the way that I live preach the gospel? That when people hear or read about Christians, they think of me and they remember my deeds. Someday I'll step out by faith and do what God's created me to do. Someday I'll live free from always worrying in every situation what people think of me because I'll fix my eyes on Jesus, following him, knowing that I may not always be the most popular person in the room. And some of us just haven't set our expectations right to know that the reality is we probably won't always be the most popular person in the room if we're following him. Someday, I'll not wait to the end of my life to realize that comfort and convenience were a lie to the soul to keep me from living out the kingdom of Jesus, following him with all devotion. Sometimes God will ask us to do something when it seems least popular, least convenient, and least comfortable to do so in the natural. Because then it really relies on trust and him living through us by his Holy Spirit each day. 
You know, tens of thousands of people met Jesus, and we know nothing of them. But this woman is remembered around the world, across the centuries, wherever the good news of King Jesus is proclaimed, because she honored the Messiah, this anointed one, at the very moment that the world was dividing over him. The Pharisees have gathered to plot to kill Jesus. Meanwhile, Rome is converging. And the disciples, having missed what was happening, said, what a waste. But she worshipped in the face of criticism. And when the posture of our heart is towards him, Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those of you who mourn, for you will be comforted. For those of you who are meek, you will inherit the earth. For those of us who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are those of us who are peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. For the way that you live for him, your reward, our reward, is eternal. You may not see the rewards in this life that you hope for, but when we're focused on Jesus with a perspective set on him and the things of him, the rewards of knowing him, serving him, following him far outweigh any earthly cost. And that's because the secret of this passage is that the reward is Jesus. He is the end and the reason why we live. He's the reason why we love a broken and hurting world around us and why we pour out all that we can, all that we have to bring to him as an act of worship. When Mary left the house that day, her fragrance was the same as Jesus. And this is how you and I are meant to live. Paul writes that our lives are a Christ-like fragrance, rising up to God. But this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. To those who are perishing, we're a dreadful smell of death and doom. But to those who are being saved, we're a life-giving perfume. And who is adequate for such a task as this? You see, we are not like the many hucksters, and what a great word that is, hucksters, who preach for personal profit. We preach the word of God with sincerity and with Christ's authority, knowing that God is watching us. Jesus sees he acknowledges and he rewards every act of love in his name because it makes a difference in the world around you. Your life speaks an eternal significance that you might be a life-giving perfume, the same fragrance of Jesus to those around you. Jesus emptied his life out for you. And Paul, who writes much of the New Testament, talks about his own life being poured out as a sacrifice, as a costly expression of love and devotion and worship to this Jesus. What does a life worth remembering look like to God for you? So may we, friends, may we be willing to pour out our lives, all that we can bring to God for the sake of people coming to know him. I know today, we'd love to minister to some people. Some of us have been holding back, saying, someday I'll be like that person who inspires me. Someday I want to be like that person, their relationship with Jesus. Some of us have been waiting for everything to fall into place in our life. When I get the job or the relationship, then I'll truly be able to live for God and do what he's created and called me to do. And others of us, just through the natural way that God has designed us in relationship with one another, we've got hurt and we've maybe become bitter 
And we've confused the church or the people with God. And so we've checked out. We've sat back. We've watched. Maybe we've judged and we've said, well, I would have done that differently. Here we get it. I, this is me too. We all have those moments. But in this one life, on this earth that you live, what will be your response? What will your heart be broken for? And when that alabaster jar is broken, what pours out of you? Your life is priceless. It's worth far more than a year's salary. It's the one thing that you can give to God. What will you do with it this week? What would it look like for you to live a life worth remembering, knowing that your life speaks an eternal significance, that yes, there is a cost to your discipleship, but it's worth it when we look at Jesus, when we see him in front of us, and we say we just want to live for him. This is your worship. You know, every single one of us is worshiping. And that looks different for each of us, the idols that we pursue. Our world is confused. It wants the kingdom without the king. But I want to say to you today that if you don't know Jesus, then there's an invitation to come to know him, to step into relationship with the living God, the one who knows you, who has a purpose and a plan for your life. He wants to offer you forgiveness for the past, for the sin that separates you from God, new life, for today and hope for the future. And I hope that someone responds to that invitation today to get to know God. So what will be your response to Jesus? How will you leave this place? Will it be with the fragrance that speaks of a life worth living in relationship with God? And what would it look like collectively if individually we took the opportunities that God gives us this week to do beautiful and good things to him? And for him. Well, I'd love to invite you to stand to respond. Lance is going to come up and help us to do that as well as we create space, as we take a moment, the time that we have to let God bring to the surface all that he wants to do and say to us today as we head into this week. What will be your response? Come, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Come, Holy Spirit. I'm just going to take a minute to let God meet with us in the place we're in. Whatever he's bringing up in us in response to all that we've heard. I was just, I got a lift from um, Phil to come to church this morning. And um, on the way there, he was just telling me what happened to him this week, that there was a guy who responded to a prayer um, when we were doing the, the um, breakthrough series. And uh, he, he's had such pain in his hands and feet, he actually, it actually got so bad it stopped him working. And when he stopped working, his finances were in absolute ruin he couldn't even pay his rent and um, he just responded in prayer and Phil just happened to bump into him as Phil said a God instance and um, his hands are healed his feet's healed he's he's gone back to work his finances are turned around Uh, and I just I just so encouraged again when we have these times of response to the Holy Spirit in prayer that not you know, life's so busy, isn't it? You can, so easy to run off and get on with the day, but it's so important just to be sensitive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. You know, when, you, when we respond in prayer, when we, we make this time available, you know, when I've ne- I don't think I've had one situation where we've invited someone to pray, then they've, they've, they've engaged with that, and there's not been some change, or some breakthrough. So, I just, I just want to welcome you guys to, to come, and if you want to respond to what Ants was saying, then I would like to encourage you to do that. Certainly, if you haven't yet encountered Jesus. And we also just sensed in the ministry time and before, and the earlier service as well, that the Holy Spirit was saying to us that he really wanted to encounter people 
who haven't yet encountered the Holy Spirit maybe in a powerful way, in a life-changing way, or you just want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The, the Word tells us to be filled and continually filled. And it's something that is really important for us to live out what Ant was just talking about. So as, as the guys play, we just if that's you, we just want to just say you feel free to come down. We want to, we want to pray for you. We want to minister to you. We want to see what the Holy Spirit wants to say to you today. Yeah. If you're watching online, it's great to have you join with us. You can email us, prayer at coastlinevineyard.church, and someone would love to respond to you and pray for you there. But we're going to say goodbye to you. We'll see you again same time next week. Hey guys, I'm Sarah and I want to invite you to come be a part of this amazing Coastline family. We believe that community is really the heartbeat of this church and really what's going to sustain revival. So one of the best things you could do is get involved in a life group. There's loads of life groups that meet all over town Tuesday through Thursday and some Mondays and Saturdays even. So loads of ways for you to connect. Why don't you fill out the form right now so you can come and join us.